Hey, it's Savvy Nick, and I want to start a project today. Uh, the project will be a series of videos, and uh, what it will include is how to run a Ubuntu development environment and use React under it. My plan is to go ahead and make some kind of a website using React. Um, we'll, we'll have more information on what that website will be as we go through. Um, but what we'll first uh, start with is installing a virtual machine on a um, computer here in order to serve as my development environment. So what I'm first going to do is um, I'm going to choose a Linux environment. Uh, I like using Ubuntu uh, so I find it fairly stable. So let's go to Ubuntu.com and go ahead and find a download for an ISO of Ubuntu. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select the latest and greatest Ubuntu desktop version, uh, 1904. So I'm clicking here on 1904. Uh, and then we'll automatically get a download started uh, since it's 64-bit, uh, as you can see here. Um, I might already have this downloaded, so I'll go ahead and actually cancel out of this, just so you know how to find Ubuntu. We'll go ahead and minimize. Uh, what I'll do now is uh, go ahead and get the latest version of VirtualBox. It's a free virtualization software that you can get from online. Uh, it's offered by Oracle. I find it really decent and I use it all the time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove this React Linux that I was already working on. But uh, let's see, do you, uh, delete all files. And that way I can get some space back and then I'll go ahead and show you how to install uh, Ubuntu 19.04 via VirtualBox. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is create a new machine. So let's see here. Uh, new. And I'm going to call it um, React Linux Dev. Uh, I'll just go ahead and store it in the normal place that I suggest here. What type of platform? Well, it's Linux, and we're going to use the Ubuntu 64-bit version. Go ahead and hit uh, Continue. Then here's where we specify how much RAM we want to use for the virtual machine. I'm going to go ahead and use about 4 gigs. That should be plenty for this application. Uh, go ahead and continue on that. Then you can select what type of virtual disk, well actually not what type of virtual disk you want to create, but um, if you want to create one, we're going to go ahead and create one. Brand new one for us. Uh, you have different options here, just different file formats, VDI, virtual box disk image, virtual uh, hard disk, and virtual machine disk. Uh, this, you should just choose whatever you're happy with, but um, if you plan on like transferring the virtual disk between computers. Sometimes it's better to go ahead and use VHD and VMDK. I'll let you do your own research on that. Um, since I'm not planning on really transferring them between computers, I'm just going to use VDI. And then on here we have, uh, do we want to dynamically allocate our space or make it a fixed size? I'm going to let it dynamically allocate so it can grow and shrink then the next place here is how much do you want to start out with so I'm gonna use around 10 gigs that's fine by me that should be plenty uh, minimally for Ubuntu you probably need around 8 gigs um, 10 is fine It'll give me enough space to do what I want to do after I have uh, created my virtual machine I'm gonna go ahead and boot the live disk so that ISO that we used or actually the ISO that we downloaded, we're going to want to mount that ISO. Uh, let's go and go to settings here. Uh, one other thing I'm going to do right before that is uh, I want I want um, two CPUs instead of one for myself. Uh, it just makes it a little easier to use when it has a little more resources. Uh, and none of these is fine. Let's see advanced here. So I also like enabling uh, the host to guess clipboard. Uh, that way you can copy and paste between the host and the guest. 
Uh, same with the drag and drop. It's sometimes nice to be able to drag and drop between the host and the guest. You can set these according to what you like. We'll move on here. Display. Um, I'm going to use a little bit more video memory. I'm going to dump it to 64 megabytes. And uh, here in storage, this is where we'll mount the uh, CD that we want. Go ahead and select this little CD icon. And you can actually hit this Choose Virtual Optical Disk File. So that's that ISO that we downloaded. Here it is. Find it in wherever you, you saved it. Go ahead and open it. And you'll see here that uh, it is selected. Go ahead and hit OK so the savings uh, take. And then we can go ahead and hit the Start button. This will start our virtual machine and hopefully the installer as well. As you see, it's booting up right now. Now, you can expect the resolution to be off quite a bit because you have to install the tools before you get the correct, uh, well, the virtual box tools before you get the correct resolution. So right now, it looks a little funny, but uh, it's fine. I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually expand this a little bit. Let's see if we can get the, no, I can't. So I'm going to go ahead and expand it full. I'm going to switch to the full view mode here. And I can probably, yeah, let's see. Let's scale it a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. This is enough for me. So I'm going to go ahead and, yeah, I know I don't want to just try Ubuntu, so I want to install it with English. So I'll go ahead and hit the install button instead of the try Ubuntu. Uh, it's asking me for a keyboard layout. English is fine for me. You can select whatever you need. Uh, we have a normal installation or a minimal installation, so basic utilities with the web browser. Honestly, that's all I really need, so I'm going to go ahead and use the minimal installation, save some space. Uh, we can download updates while installing Ubuntu. That will save, as it says, save time after the installation because they'll already be there. You won't have to download them again. If you need any third-party software for graphics and additional media formats, you can select this here. I'll be okay. So we're going to hit continue here. I'm going to go ahead and erase the current disk that I have and install Ubuntu from scratch. You can also select this uh, logical volume management if you want. Uh, as it says, it allows for taking snapshots and easier partition resizing. Um, for now, I, I don't really, I don't really need that. So I'm going to go ahead. I know how to resize later if I need to, um, and just uh, choose the default option here. Hit install now. Here it's warning you that uh, it's going to write any changes to the disk. So you want to make sure that there's nothing on your disk that. Uh, it's free to erase. Um, I know mine is, so I'm going to hit continue on this. Uh, and this is really for setup of time zone. I'm going to be in Denver, Colorado. I'm going to hit continue after this. Now it's asking me for a username and my computer's name, as well as some passwords for a user that I'm going to make. So I'm just going to use Savvy Nick and I'm going to use Savvy Nick as the computer, and I'm going to call it, uh, let's see, Devbox. Uh, my username is Savvy Nick. That's fine by me. I'm going to put some kind of a password in here. And I like to be logged in automatically when the system starts up, so I'm going to go ahead and select this radio button and hit continue. And now we are actually installing the system, so this might take a little bit.
All right, at this point, the installation is complete. If you made it this far, go ahead and smash that like button for me. It really does help. Uh, we'll go ahead and restart now so we can do a few more things with our development environment and uh, then that'll be the end of the video. So go ahead, hit restart now. Take a moment here. It's asking us to go ahead and remove our installation medium. We don't have any, so just go ahead and press enter. We'll be all right. VirtualBox is just restarting now, so our virtual machine is restarting. I don't care for this message, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. It's just because I'm clicking around. All right, so here's an option to connect online accounts. I really don't care. No, I don't want to send a system info to Canonical. Um, location services, no. Previous, I'm ready to go. All right, so it still looks a little bit off, and that's because we haven't installed the um, VirtualBox tools yet. Uh, you can usually do this by going up to the top and selecting the insert guest edition CD image. Once you've done this and once uh, the CD has mounted on the computer, you'll, you should get a message similar to this. Uh, it's asking you if you want to run the software. We're gonna go ahead and run and install it. It's gonna ask you for a password for your account. So you give it privileges to run. We'll do that. You'll see a terminal pop up and some messages scroll through. This will take just a moment. All right, great. It looks like everything installed properly. It's asking me to go ahead and hit return to close this window. And I did. As you can see, our resolution is fixed now. You can go ahead and restart the uh, virtual box at this point, but the this is mainly all you needed to do in order to get the proper resolution and a couple tools in, installed so the virtual box and Ubuntu kind of coexist a little better. Uh, at this point, we got our um, development environment. Uh, the plan is to make a few videos here about uh, React, and on the next video we're going to go ahead and install uh, things like uh, React and Node.js um, on our development box, and we're going to start working on uh, some kind of a website using React. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, please like, subscribe, and comment below. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Thank you so much. Bye.